All right, this is Eric again. Uh, number 29, Bites and Stinks, Part 1. This will be a multi-part series to, uh, so we can tackle several things that bite and sting. Uh, we're going to start with the arachnida. Uh, this is spider scorpions and ticks. I really hate scorpions, but I may hate ticks a little bit more. So uh, there are 30,000 species of venomous spiders, uh, meaning the spiders that produce venom. There's uh, 14,000 species of scorpions that produce venom, but a overwhelming majority of these, almost all of them, are not harmful to humans. Uh, we're just going to tackle the couple that can cause problems. Ticks, on the other hand, may actually be the most trouble for us uh, just because they pass disease, uh, like Lyme disease and Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever. Uh, these are little boogers, and some of them, they can be really small and hard to see. In many cases, the Lyme disease, uh, people don't even remember being bitten by a tick. All right, first up, the Loxosceles reclusa. This is the very frequently blamed but very infrequently guilty spider, also known as the brown recluse. Uh, this kind of gives you a general size uh, estimate of this. These, by their name, recluse. Uh, don't seek out uh, busy areas. Uh, they like to hide in wood piles and um, and just kind of out of the way spots. Here's another example: nice long, thin legs, and you can see the classic uh, fiddle-shaped uh, marking on the back of the thorax. Uh, here's a close-up. Uh, these are also known as fiddleback spiders. Now, here's the distribution of Loxosceles reclusa. Uh, so if you were up in Idaho and you think you got bitten by brown recluse, you're probably not. Um, it's kind of in this sort of central and south central region. Uh, when you get bitten, uh, there's typically some burning at the sites, and as the days go by, you get kind of redness and a blister followed by necrosis, which is a fancy term for dying tissue or dead tissue, uh, necrotic tissue. Um, with the inflammatory response, sometimes you can get things like fevers and chills. You can feel like you want to puke. You get kind of this weakness and uh, something called malaise, which again is just a general feeling of badness. If the toxicity is really bad, uh, you can have some disruption of the red blood cells where they break apart. Um, that can also chew up your platelets, uh, which make it may may make things more likely that you can bleed. Uh, and in rare cases, you get things like shock, renal failure. Uh, edema in the lungs or, or kind of fluid in the lungs uh, and hemorrhage kind of due to the uh, platelet destruction. That's really, really uncommon though. Here's an example of uh, a brown recluse during the progression of a bite. This is day one. Um, you can see where somebody took a sharpie and marked a circle around uh, the area of the bite. So it's kind of right in the center. Here's day three, uh, and you'll notice the wound is really sharp margins, and that's because uh, some surgeon came in and cut out the dead and dying tissue, t and so that's a surgical cut and not due to the uh, actual spider bite. Here's day nine. Um, the wound is now kind of stabilized and now is reversing course, so instead of continuing to spread, it's uh, it's starting to get better. This dressing that's applied is a, called a wet to dry dressing. So you take some Curlex gauze or this cotton gauze and you make it wet and you put it into the wound and as it dries it will adhere to some of the base of the wound and just the uh, mat, matted material. Um, and as you take it off, it takes off this debris uh, to help keep the wound clean. So those are called wet to dry dressings. Uh, you don't want the dressing to go completely dry, however. You want it just to go from uh, fairly wet to uh, slightly dry. So the brown recluse, the key thing is good wound care. Um, if these are bad bites, however, you're really going to need somebody that knows what they're doing uh, to come in with a scalpel and take out this uh, necrotic tissue. Uh, this is something that's hard to do by yourself and hard to do without training. And, and again, Really bad cases may require skin grafting. Uh, your skin is a huge line of defense against bacteria and other uh, things that would invade your body. So you want to keep the skin intact as much as possible. Uh, and in, in these really terrible cases, skin grafting uh, may be required. And this can take weeks to months before it fully gets better. But if you have nothing else, good wound care is going to be 
the mainstay, just uh, very attentive and frequent dressing changes. Now we'll move over to the uh, Lactodectus mactans, uh, also known as Black Widow. This is the female version of the Black Widow. Uh, these are really shiny black, uh, very large abdomen spiders. Uh, here's a male. This one was brought in by a lady that got uh, bit while she was working on a tractor and came into our ER. Uh, fortunately, the male species is uh, uh, not very problematic. Uh, doesn't really have the venom uh, injection like the female does. But on the bottom side of the male, there's also the red hourglass. So with the black widow, when you're bitten by these, you kind of get this uh, redness and swelling of the area with this pinprick sensation. Uh, within a few minutes, say 15 minutes to an hour, you can get this uh, crampy-like pain at the site. Uh, and then this pain just sort of spreads over the entire body. Um, there have been a few cases that uh, people have this very intense abdominal pain. Uh, and, and there's been reports of people going and having their appendix taken out with physicians thinking they had appendicitis when it was actually just a black widow bite. Uh, patients that have this kind of whole body reaction can also feel very restless and anxious. Uh, the vomiting may be present, um, trouble breathing, and trouble speaking, uh, along with a very intense sense of anxiety. Now there is an anti-venin uh, for the black widow, and this um, severe bites may require that, but it's hard to get. It's not something that's typically stocked. Um, putting the ice back to the area may help with some of the, the localized pain, but black widow bites typically are not too problematic other than just the severe discomfort, uh, and you just sort of have to wait it out. Scorpions. Um, there's lots of scorpions. The only one that's we consider dangerous in the United States is the bark scorpion of Arizona. There's several different flavors of bark scorpion, um, but the one in Arizona in particular uh, is is the one that uh, has been known to kill people. Although again, that's really really rare. Here's an example of a uh, Arizona bark scorpion with a couple little babies. And of note, uh, when I lived in Arizona, we would do this for fun. You'd take a black light, and you'd go find these suckers, and they would fluoresce and glow. And then you'd take a little blowtorch and fry them, or skewer them, or kill them. Uh, but it's kind of freaky when you get out with a black light, and you just see how many of these things there are. So most scorpions uh, have mild envenomations, like a wasp or bee. Uh, the Texas bark scorpion is not very poisonous in terms of danger, but it is supposed to be one of the more painful stings uh, in the world. Uh, but the uh, Arizona bark scorpion is the one that's uh, venomous in North America. And the fatalities that we've seen with this has either been somebody that's really young or really old um, with, or somebody with a suppressed immune system. Again, these are really, really rare to have a, a fatality with this type of envenomation. Uh, most of the thing, uh, the most important thing is just again, uh, symptom care. You know, pain control. Um, with the Arizona scorpion, you can get this numbness, uh, hypersalivation, uh, even muscle weakness and paralysis, and uh, seizure-like muscle uh, movement. Uh, treating this with a benzodiazepine like Valium or Ativan uh, can be helpful. Uh, there is an antivenin, again, this is only for the Arizona bark scorpion that I'm talking about right now. Um, there is an antivenin made in Mexico called Anascorp, uh, but if you're not in Phoenix or Tucson or in that general region, um, you're not going to have access to this. Uh, but again, if you're not in Arizona, you're not going to be stung by one of these bark scorpions. And again, the, the most important thing with any type of scorpion bite, if it's very severe, is, is uh, pain control with uh, a narcotic pain medicine uh, or some muscle relaxers like the benzodiazepines. Again, that's like Valium or Ativan or Xanax. All right, that's it for uh, uh, scorpions and the two spiders that are, uh, have significant venom in the United States. We will tackle ticks on the next one. Thanks.